Okay, so, uh, welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the LDL receptor. In this video, what I want to now do is discuss uh, the synthesis of the LDL receptor in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, then how it's trafficked uh, to the Golgi apparatus, okay, and then how it's trafficked from the Golgi apparatus to the plasma membrane, then what happens when it binds to LDL and the process that then follows uh, to endocytose uh, the LDL receptor with LDL bound to it. Okay, so uh, let's start with the production then of the LDL um, receptor. Okay, so let's draw our intracellular organelles then. So let's let this be the nucleus here. Okay, so this is the nucleus. Uh, then uh, we'll have the rough endoplasmic reticulum here, like so. So this uh, is the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and for short, I'll denote rough endoplasmic reticulum as RER. I suppose I should just write it out at least once. So this stands for the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, and it's convention to put the rough as a lowercase r and then the endoplasmic reticulum as uppercase E and uppercase R. Okay, right. Then the next part of the pathway will be the Golgi apparatus. Now the Golgi apparatus is another membrane bound organelle and it consists of these set, well usually around seven cisterni, okay, which are these flattened sort of discs basically. So they're a membrane bound or, um, compartment on their own accord, of their own, in their own right. And basically they're squashed sort of disc shapes, okay, and you've got them stacked on top of one another like so. Okay, and usually you have around seven of these on top of one another, like so. Okay, there we go. So this is the uh, Golgi apparatus. And each one of these uh, stacked discs within the Golgi apparatus is known as a cisterna, okay? Um, and the plural is cisterni, right? So I'll have to now have an arrow to multiply them. Right, okay. So, uh, basically... What's going to happen is uh, the LDL receptor is going to be synthesized in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, okay? And then it's going to be implanted into the rough endoplasmic reticulum membrane. So I think I'll now just note the LDL receptor like so. Okay, so this represents the special ligand binding domain of the LDL receptor. So remember, the, this LDL receptor type A repeat domain, which binds to the apolipoprotein B100 within the LDL molecules. I'm now denoting that as this portion here. Okay, so the ligand binding domain is going to be facing into the lumen of the ER. So this is the portion that will later on be extracellularly, basically. And the cytoplasmic portion here, which will have that MPXY uh, motif in, is already on the cytoplasmic side, basically, because this is the cytoplasm around here. Okay, so here is our LDL uh, receptor. Okay, so it's synthesized in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. What's then going to happen is you're going to get the budding off of little vesicles from the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which will contain this uh, LDL receptor. Okay, so let me draw one of these little vesicles here. Okay, and I should have drawn this bigger, damn it. Uh, okay, so here comes one of these little vesicles that will bud off uh, the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So if you imagine just sort of pulling the membrane out and then budding a little vesicle off, that's how we've done that. And we've ended up with the uh, low-density lipoprotein receptor within that little vesicle. Okay? And this is going to transport the, lo the low-density lipoprotein receptor from the rough endoplasmic reticulum to this first um, cisterni of the um, Golgi apparatus. Okay, and basically this side of the Golgi apparatus, which faces the rough endoplasmic reticulum, is known as the cis-Golgi. Okay, cis means on the same side as, so it's the side of the Golgi that is on the same side as the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now these vesicles which uh, transmit proteins from uh, the rough endoplasmic reticulum to the cis-Golgi are known as COP2 
two coated visa cores. Okay, so this is a COP2 coated visa core. Now what's going to happen is the COP2 coated vesicle is going to uh, arrive at the cis Golgi and it's going to fuse with the cis Golgi membrane and then the LDL receptor is going to end up within the uh, cis Golgi now. So it's now got its uh, ligand binding domain, this LDL receptor type A repeat domain uh, facing into the lumen of the Golgi apparatus. Then what will gradually happen is it will be transmitted down uh, the Golgi basically from the cis Golgi to this other side of the Golgi that is on the opposite side to the rough endoplasmic reticulum which is therefore called the trans Golgi. Trans means on the opposite side basically. Okay, uh, so you're going to the opposite side of the Golgi that's away from the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so what will happen is the LDL receptor will make its way down here and as it does so it will get all sorts of modifications occurring to it. Okay, right. Uh, and now then what's going to happen is you're going to bud a vesicle off that uh, cis Golgi here like so, and now I've got more space so I can draw the vesicle bigger, but of course it shouldn't be bigger than the other ones. Okay, so here is this vesicle that's budded off the trans Golgi, and I'm sorry, it's been drawn bigger than the trans Golgi final cisterna was itself. Okay, but never mind. And this sort of a vesicle is just called a secretory vesicle because this is now going to go to the plasma membrane. Okay, so this is a secretory vesicle. So what will happen is this secretory vesicle will go to the plasma membrane. Okay, so let's say uh, this is the plasma membrane here. Here comes our secretory vesicle. And now that I've got more space, I can actually show you the process of the secretory vesicle fusing with the plasma membrane. Okay, and I want to do this so that I can convince you that the LDL receptor is going to end up with that LDL receptor type A repeat domain on the correct side. Okay, so this line here, this represents the plasma membrane, and this is just a secretory vesicle. So what's going to happen is the secretory vesicle is going to come up, and it's basically going to fuse with the plasma membrane, like so. Okay, and then here is our LDL receptor here, with its uh, LDL receptor type A repeat domain here facing into the uh, lumen of the secretory vesicle. And now what you can see is when this all evens out, what we're going to end up with is our LDL receptor on the plasma membrane with the um, LDL receptor type A repeat domain facing out into the extracellular fluid. So just to stress that point, this is the cytoplasmic side of the plasma membrane. Okay, and this is the extracellular fluid side, the ECF. Right, so that's how we get our LDL receptors to the plasma membrane. Now what we want to discuss is uh, what's going to happen when an LDL molecule actually comes to bind here. So what's now going to happen is an LDL molecule is going to come along. So let's have our low-density lipoprotein here. Okay, and what's going to happen is the apolipoprotein B100 is going to bind to uh, the LDL receptor type A repeat domain. Okay, so firstly let's just draw our LDL molecule out. So this is our low density lipoprotein molecule. So remember we have our massive great apolipoprotein B100 and this is going to bind to the LDL receptor type A repeat domain here. Okay, so I'll colour this apolipoprotein B100 in in green. So in green, this massive great blob here is the apolipoprotein B100. Uh, right, then the rest of this uh, outer layer is made up of phospholipids, which will mainly be lecithin molecules, with a few cholesterol molecules uh, dabbled in. Okay. So here are the phospholipids. You might have a few other types of phospholipids, uh, for instance, other phosphoglycerolipids, and also potentially some sphingomyelins. Okay, but mainly it will be lecithin. 
okay? And then dotted in among those phospholipids, you'll have some cholesterol molecules in blue, which are free cholesterol molecules, and therefore have that alcohol group which can face the outside world and interact nicely with water. Okay, meanwhile, in the centre, what you have is a huge number of cholesterol esters. Okay, so cholesterol molecules, where you have had long-chain carboxylic acid molecules esterified onto the alcohol group, so that that one little chance that the cholesterol molecule had of being polar has now been stripped away from it, and it is completely neutral and completely hydrophobic. Okay, so what's going to happen is an LDL molecule is going to come and bind to our LDL receptor. And basically, within the uh, type A repeat domain of the LDL receptor, you have a bunch of acidic residues. Whilst within the apolipoprotein B100, you have a bunch of basic residues. So I want to now explain to you how can acidic and basic residues end up binding together, okay? Well, basically, the best way to do this is give some examples of uh, acidic and basic residues. Okay, so uh, the example of an acidic residue that I would give is, for instance, a um, aspartic acid residue, okay? So here is uh, the structure of an aspartic acid residue. So here is the core amino acid structure. And then the R group of aspartic acid basically consists of a methylene group, then with a carboxylic acid group off the side, like so. So basically, acidic residues can donate protons away. So for instance, the aspartic acid molecule can donate this proton away from that oxygen atom within the alcohol group of the carboxylic acid group. Okay, and when it does that, what you'll end up with is that oxygen will be left with a negative charge. So the conjugate base of the aspartic acid molecule, which by the way is called aspartate, okay, so that's the strict difference between aspartic acid and aspartate, okay, uh, this will have a negative charge. So if you have a lot of acidic residues within this LDL receptor type A repeat domain, then some of them will lose their protons, they'll give away their protons, and will therefore end up with negative charges. So you're going to have a lot of negative charge on that LDL receptor type A repeat domain. Now, let's have a look at a basic residue, and the easiest example of a basic residue would be a lysine uh, amino acid. Okay, so here's the amino group, here is the alpha carbon with a hydrogen coming off it, here is the carboxylic acid group, and then in lysine what you have is four methylene groups, and I don't think I actually have space to draw four methylene groups, so I'll just draw one methylene group, and then suffix it at four, like so, and then I'll have the amino group right on the end. Now basically, the nitrogen atom of this amino group has a lone pair of electrons, okay, which functions as a nice centre of negative charge. So this lone pair of electrons here that I've highlighted in red, this is a beautiful centre of negative charge. So protons, which are in solution, love negative charge because they have a positive charge. So they like to come and associate with this lone pair of electrons of the nitrogen, which means that if you have a lot of basic residues um, within this apolipoprotein B100, some of them will end up protonated and they'll end up with a positive charge. So basically, apolipoprotein B100 is going to have a positive charge. The uh, LDL um, type A repeat domain is going to have a negative charge because it's got these acidic residues that will be able to interact nicely together and that's how uh, the apolipoprotein B100 binds to the um, LDL receptor type A repeat domain. Okay, now once this happens, it's going to cause some sort of conformational change in the receptor, which will result in that special endocytic motif, the NPXY motif, becoming visible to these um, cytoplasmic proteins, which uh, choose which proteins are going to be endocytosed from the plasma membrane. 
OK, so here's the carboxylic acid terminus of the protein. And remember, on the cytoplasmic tail, we have this NPXY endocytic motif. OK, so the binding of the LDL to the LDL receptor type A repeat domain is going to trigger a conformational change that will result in this being available to another protein within the cytoplasm. OK, so the endocytic motif will become available. And now what will happen is another protein is going to come and bind to this MPXY motif that is usually within the cytoplasm. So what's the name for this next protein? Well, this next protein is called the LDL receptor adapter protein 1. OK, so let's draw this here. So it's going to come now and bind to the MPXY uh, motif. So this is the LDL receptor. So that's all common sense. And then adapter protein AP1. So I'll write out its full name somewhere. I'll write it out down here. So this stands for the low-density lipoprotein, LDL, and then we've got R for receptor, and then the AP is for adapter protein 1. Okay, so basically adapter proteins are things which bind to endocytic motifs, and then they also bind to clathrin. Okay, and clathrin is going to form a uh, meshwork structure, which will then result in the uh, endocytosis of these LDL receptors. Okay, right, so LDL receptor adapter protein 1. Now, the LDL receptor adapter protein 1 uh, also has another name. It's also called the ARH, okay? And this stands for the autosomal recessive hypercholesterolemia protein, okay? So this is the autosomal recessive, that's the, so the A is for autosomal, the R is for recessive, and then the H is for hypercholesterolemia. Now, the reason it's called that is because there is this condition called autosomal recessive hypercholesterolemia. Oh, and that's a really long word. Uh, there is this condition called autosomal recessive hypercholesterolemia. Okay, and basically it was found that the protein that you had a mutation in, if you had autosomal recessive hypercholesterolemia, was this adapter protein. So it was the LDL receptor adapter protein 1. Okay, and this results in the inability to actually endocytose the LDL molecules. So you end up with far too much LDL within the within your blood, basically, because cells just cannot take it up because the LDL receptor adapter protein 1 is not functional. Okay, and basically what this recessive means here is that you need two loss of function mutations in the LDL receptor adapter protein 1, basically. So remember, you'll have two genes for it because it's within the autosome. Okay, so you've got two homologous chromosomes of every autosomal chromosome. Okay, and that means that you'll have two genes for this LDL receptor adapter protein 1. If you are to get autosomal recessive hypercholesterolemia, you need to have a mutation in both of them. So if I just draw a little picture, let's say this is one of your genes and this is another one of your genes, and I should just have double-stranded DNA here. Okay, so let's say this is one of your genes for the LDL receptor adapter protein 1, so the LDL receptor adapter protein 1, and let's say this is another one of your genes. Now, basically, if you have a mutation that means that one of these is not functional, okay, but then the other one's fine, you will not get the disease because you still have this one which will produce enough of the LDL receptor adapter protein 1 that you can endocytose the LDL without a problem. But if you then have another mutation in this other one, so if you have two mutations, then you have absolutely no functional LDL receptor adapter protein 1. And therefore, you cannot endocytose LDL out of the blood, and it will remain in the blood and therefore you'll get far too high levels of LDL within the blood. And LDL is this carrier of cholesterol, so you get hypercholesterolemia. You have far too high levels of cholesterol within the blood. Okay, now, we'll call it there for this video and continue our discussion in the next video where we'll discuss the clathrin-mediated endocytosis.